Welcome to Child Care Rockstar Radio. I am your host, Chris Murray. Child care leaders around the globe are breaking through challenges, leading the way in innovation, testing new best practices, and impacting children and families in a much more powerful and positive way than ever before. Each week, join me for interviews with early childhood leaders and experts that will leave you inspired to become the next child care rock star. Now, let's go. This is episode 89 of Child Care Rockstar Radio, featuring Heather Jensen and Diane Havens. Episode 89, I am thrilled to welcome this episode to you. It is one of the uh, pivotal Child Care Rockstar episodes because we are celebrating mother-daughter team, Heather Jensen and mom Diane, who are co-owners and Diane's the founder of their school uh, near Houston, Texas. And uh, the school is called Kids in Action. Uh, And these two ladies are seriously in action. Unbelievable what they have gone through, what they've lived through. And they tell the story with uh, a heartfelt emotion and a story again of overcoming adversity at the highest level with two floods, not just one, but two weather events. One was a hurricane and one was a flood caused by torrential rains. Unbelievable. And as a result of everything that they did to stay positive and succeed through all of that, they were crowned this year's winners of Child Care, the Child Care Rockstar Contest. So uh, it is my great pleasure to bring to you today in this episode, the story of Heather and Diane. Uh, they're quite a pair and we learn all sorts of fun facts about them. We learn what they did to keep their team positive, and they literally kept almost every single family with them through both crises. On the first time that they had their weather incident, which they were in the school till 10 o'clock at night, taking care of the babies and the kids, um, dealing with this flood as they were upstairs. And they didn't lose a family. And then the second time, which was only, I think like six months later, they had the hurricane. They lost a few families because of just fatigue. (laughs) Like, really, this is happening again? Um, They were like, well, we couldn't blame those families, you know, but I'm sure they've won a few of them back. Uh, But they just don't stop, these ladies. They are just the energizer bunnies of, we can do it. We're going to get through it. Positivity and uh, just pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. So um, we cover a lot in this episode. We talk about uh, leadership, uh, mindset, teacher appreciation, love, uh, things to do with your team to keep your culture strong, marketing, uh, enrollment tips, and so much more here at Child Care Rockstar Radio. And so uh, with that, I'm not going to give too much more of a, a story of what I've got going on, just all, all sorts of goodness here uh, in the mountains of Colorado. We've been getting snow. We have been hoping that that snow tamps down the wildfires that have been happening, not near me, but uh, a couple hours away, uh, about halfway between myself and Denver. Um, people in Grand Lake and Grand County have lost their homes. And uh, it's been a horrible, a horrible time for the state of Colorado with regard to wildfires. So we were very blessed to get 12 inches of snow three days ago, two days ago, and um, in most of the parts of the state. And so that's just been uh, really, really good to try to bring it down and lots of cold temperatures too. So that's a good thing. With that, we're getting ready for the ski season. I'm getting ready to celebrate a birthday. We're getting ready to host a Halloween party, but we might not be able to host it the way we want to because we'll have to be socially distanced with masks on, maybe. I don't know what we're going to do. We want to be responsible about what we're doing. But the teenagers really want to get together. So this whole, uh, you know, social need of being a teen 15 and 16 years old during this time is really, really tough. I think it's toughest on these high schoolers. I really do. It's tough on all the kids of all ages. Uh, The little kids don't understand why it's happening. They don't understand why they have to wear masks, but 
these teens have been waiting a long time to finally have the ability to celebrate with each other and be in high school and just be, be high schoolers, you know, and have a prom and have graduation and have parties. And so it's tough on all of us. And so uh, we're doing the best we can in our household. And I'm sure you're the same. Um, and with that, we're just kind of celebrating life, taking it day by day and trying to stay healthy and blessings for all of you guys to stay healthy and um, bringing you the best that we can from our virtual summit event to this podcast, to our email content and our blog. And I want to shout out to my marketing team and all of my team. We've got new coaches on the team. So by the time that you hear this, uh, the cat will be out of the bag and I'll, cause so I can celebrate uh, on this podcast right now, uh, Rachel Supala and Andrea Wartman, our new coaches that just joined the team and uh, recent addition of Miss Jennifer Slavin from Magic Memories. And so we have three new coaches working part-time in our organization and just bringing you the best of the best. So lots of great energy uh, in this team. And if you are still on the fence, you might have attended the summit. You saw my invitation to join the Academy. Uh, and thanks for tuning into this podcast, by the way, because I really try hard to keep this podcast from being a sales pitch for the Academy, but we do feature members because we just want to give you guys stories of what's going on in the industry. And I know many, many, many of you, even if you're not in the Academy, just love hearing the stories of what people are doing in their schools. You just eat it up. And so I'm really just blessed to be able to bring you this podcast. It's a very highly rated podcast and uh, has quite has gotten quite a following now. So um, with 90 episodes in the can, all, driving to 100 quickly, uh, we'll just continue to bring industry experts and share with you best practice stories and human stories of what's going on in our industry all around the globe. And so uh, this story here right now, episode 89 that you're going to hear next is one of the best, one of the best, Heather and Diane, what a, what a team, what a, what a, what a, I just can't even tell you what a mother and daughter duo, these, these ladies, you're going to love their energy. So let's dive in. And don't forget, if you're listening to this podcast, it also uh, can come to you via video. So if you'd like to watch the podcast and see the faces behind the voices. You can always find that at our YouTube channel. Uh, just search up the Child Care Success Company or Chris Murray with a K and you'll find our podcast there, our, uh, our video uh, YouTube channel version of the podcast as well. So enjoy everybody, however you consume it. Thanks for tuning in and let's dive in and meet Heather and Diane, winners of Child Care Rockstar 2020 here on the podcast, episode 89. Enjoy. Welcome to the podcast. This is Chris Murray, your host, and I am thrilled to be coming at you with episode 89. And we've got uh, an amazing duo of ladies here with us. Our guests are Heather Jensen and her mom, Diane Havens. Uh, they're a mother-daughter team, and they happen to be the child care rock stars 2020, the winners of our contest that we do annually. So Heather and Diane, how are you? Super. Doing excellent. Super. Still riding the high from a child care rock star. Absolutely. <laughs> and ride it, you shall. Um, so where are you right now? So we are in Kingwood, Texas, which is about 30 miles north of Houston. Very good. And I'm assuming that that's where your school is located? Correct. Probably right. about a mile away from our house. Right. And we both live in Kingwood, probably okay. about a mile away from right. each other. Nice. <laughs> so, we're a nice. Close. We're a little close. <laughs> a little close. <laughs> <laughs> but I get to be near the grandbaby, so that's that's super for me. So I get the grandbaby. That's great. That's what, that's what we love. Um Tell us a little bit about you, your business name. Uh, you just gave us your location. Give us your capacity and your current enrollment. Just share a little bit more about what you got going on there. Sure. Um, so our capacity is about 204. Um, and we're still about like 70% right now. From March and April, we were about 25% with uh, the pandemic 
So we've gotten back up to about 70%. So still Good. a bit of ways to go, but we're getting there every week. We're getting a few more kids. Mm-hmm. So nice. It's still, it's still a work in progress. Still a work in progress. But she um, started the school back in 1988. 1988. We were just a motor development program like the Jim Breeze, But that was kind of before the, the big wave of all those uh, motor development schools. Uh-huh. Having taught PE, that was kind of my passion was a little as kid. So when my son was little, little, I, I wanted to be doing something while he was at school, but not full time because we, I, I taught PE before we went overseas with my husband's job for eight years. In fact, she was born in Scotland, hence the name Heather. So, and so when we, uh, I wanted to teach, but not, I also wanted to be an at-home mom. So I taught while he was at preschool three hours a day and that was perfect. And I, it was me, myself and me, you know, doing the phone, <laughs> doing the teaching and doing the advertising and putting everything together at, at the local YMCA, which at that time had had the plush, cushy carpet. What do you call it? Shag carpet. Shag yeah, shag. I have to rake it between classes. Oh, my God. So that, that was, I know. I know. Gross, we don't, we yeah. don't want to know what's at the bottom of that shag. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was uh, kind of the never intending in my mouth, wildest imaginations to do anything like this. You know, I was just kind of a Let's do a couple hours a week gig and, and and still get my teaching passion out of my system and still be a mom, you know, full time. So, well, and we still do that. We still have um, like mommy and me classes. So right. non-COVID times we'll have um, like kinder music classes and gymnastics and we'll come in throughout the day. Right. Even though preschool still going on. And then we do birthday parties on the weekend and we run out to churches on Sunday. So we're like seven days a week. Right, right. When I started, I didn't really have an office. My home was my office. So my husband used to always say, I wish you'd get a phone bo- a phone booth and just sit in the phone so I don't have to hear it all day long. You know, so it's, 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 it's come a long ways. It's come a long ways. Well, I love that. And I want to dig into that here in a minute about utilizing your space during the weekends and the evenings, because a lot of people have this beautiful, shiny building that's quite expensive sitting there vacant with no use. Well, another, another thing is um, we have a cell phone tower on our back acre, which is... <laughs> We own a cell phone tower. Yeah. yeah. Which so that's fun. another thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we do birthday parties on the weekend and, and we were just kind of starting to get back into it again. Cause I mean, there was a time we do like eight or nine parties on the weekends. Um, Cause we have a, a big gym. And so, and then we have, we rent the facility out to a church on Sundays uh-huh. and then we have a karate studio that comes and rents out when the kids leave in the evening and exercise on the other side of the gym. So right. uh, we've gotten a couple of good little tenants over the period of time, yeah. you know, it all, it all streams of revenue. Out. I love that. But we, we've lost a little bit of that during the COVID, but it's okay. Of course. But yeah, it's going to all come back. That's really, really cool. Um, and did, I don't think you told us the name of your school. Kids in Kids Action. In Action. Kids in Action. Mm-hmm. I knew that. I just wanted the listeners to know. <laughs> Kids in Action. Um, very, very cool. And is there a separate brand for your birthday party business? Nope, it's all kids in action. All kids in action. Okay. It's all kids in action. So yeah, love yeah. it, love it, love it. Um, tell us a little bit more about your home life. What do you guys have going on at home, and um, how, what do you guys like to do in your free time? Well, she has like twenty things in her schedule every day with her three kids. I mean, they're all in sports, not just one sport a piece, two sports a piece, and band. So she's going nonstop. It's a lot. It's a lot, but she loves it. She's I have one in every level. So I have a high schooler, a middle schooler, and an elementary. And so she has the three grandkids. So uh yeah, we stay a little bit busy. Yeah. My husband's a huge help. Oh, he's huge. So yeah. uh yeah. They just celebrate we 20 years, conquer, 20 years in yeah. Jamaica. And I got to watch the kids when they did that. So yeah, that was good. But yeah. And I have a 70 year old, an 80 year old husband. So I'm at home with him. I, I drive him to his doctor's appointment. So my, my life's not nearly as interesting as hers, <laughs> but it's still full. It's good. It's all good. It's all good. Different okay. stages of life, right? We women go through different stages. I was her Absolutely. when I was, really, I was her when I was her age. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I love that. And I love that you celebrated 20 years, Heather, with your hubby and you guys got it all going on and you're in the, on the busy, busy, busy throes of life and sports and shuttling and all that. Um, My mom taxi. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) So we're going to hear a little bit more about your story because I'm going to have these beautiful ladies tell their story of the things that they told in their rock star presentation that um, earned them the crowns um of this contest but uh, which is quite a story so we'll dive more into that in a moment um but first 
It's the fun fact reveal time. <laughs> so what is something about you that hardly anybody knows? And I'd love to get each of you to share. I hope you don't have small children watching this program, do you? <laughs> <laughs> what do you no, this to- is an adult program. Come on, <laughs> Diane. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Um, No one knows, but I'm a secret um, closet washboard player. So really, I'm on the stage playing the washboard. I have videos. She has videos of me playing the washboard. So I'm I'm very good. I have to admit, I'm very good. Yes. So I do love Cajun music and playing the washboard. That's my secret fun fact. (laughs) Now, are you originally from Louisiana, like Lafayette or anywhere? Well, I've been around music all my life. My parents both were musicians, and I just love, I mean, how, how could you not love Cajun music? It's just fun. From Zydeco. Yeah. From Zydeco. Zydeco. It's as good as it gets. And when we when we turned 30, our, we had a big party in our parking lot. We had a Zydeco band. Uh, it was a surprise. Uh, she didn't she didn't tell me about it. We had a big Zydeco band. And of all things, they didn't bring their washboard. So I've not forgiven that band for that. So it's all right. <laughs> I want to see some footage of that. I think yeah, you I should incorporate that into your rock star uh, <laughs> highlight video. There you go. We'll do that. <laughs> she can be quite the entertainer when she wants to be. I bet. Uh, Heather, uh, how about you? What's a fun fact? So I am a huge Harry Potter buff, uh, which is all not really that interesting because a lot of people are. Um, but I actually have a Harry Potter tattoo. Um, oh. It's uh, always. Are you a Harry Potter fan? Yeah. So I have always tattooed on my wrist and it's actually in her handwriting. <laughs> oh my God. How cool is that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm a huge, huge Harry Potter fan. Uh, I was trying to get my daughter and her boyfriend. They're having a resurgence in the teens. Um, there's a whole thing about um, uh, who's the blonde villain kid. Um Oh, Draco Malfoy. Draco. There's all these girls that have a crush on Draco. So there's a whole Draco fan club going on. Like this is happening right now in 2020. I'm like, what? So because of that, there's a resurgence in dressing up for Halloween, which is going to be good at last. Yeah. yeah. Not even a week, five <laughs> days. Um, so yeah, we have a sorting hat at home. We have some other cool stuff at home and yeah, I'm, I'm into it. So nice. very cool. <laughs> good. Well, Let's talk a little bit about early childhood. Let's talk about uh, your story and overcoming adversity. So you guys had several weather-related incidents, uh, which caused multiple floods in your school and have had one of the biggest challenges of overcoming um, just issues that would potentially close schools down, not only once in your lifetime, but twice. So tell us a little bit about what happened to you and how you dug down to overcome those challenges that were facing you in that moment. So yeah, you want to go or you want me to go? Well, I just, one of the things that we really, with the first flood, which was probably the worst of the two floods, because it happened when the kids were there. So we have two stories. So we had to take all the kids, about 60 kids upstairs, which really only accommodates 30 kids. So we had to take all the kids upstairs because the water was coming into the bottom floor. And it was it was pickup time and parents couldn't get to the building at all because at that time they had boats in the streets to take people from A to B. So that was really challenging. And she had the foresight to go to, we have a pool on our property as well. So she walked to the pool and get, got the life jackets out for the infants, walking through waist deep water. And so we had life jackets for the babies. It was pretty traumatic. And so we had babies upstairs up through like the sixth, you know, fifth graders. So we had all the groups upstairs and then they were there till 10, 1030 at night. And so we had a, a little grocery store next door. So we trudged across through the waist deep water. And this is nasty water. <laughs> we trudged across the street to go get dinner because we didn't have food for the kiddos and they were starving. So it was, it was pretty traumatic. And the newscasters came out and videoed and, you know, it was all over the TV that we had children stranded upstairs and, and uh, the, the boats came to get the kids. But when they realized there were 50 kids upstairs, they just turned around and left and they said, we can't haul off 50 kids. So it, it was, it was pretty traumatic. It was pretty traumatic. Yeah. I yeah. think that was that was pretty memorable. It's, well, because I mean, everybody knows Hurricane Harvey, with you know, hit Houston super hard, but it actually didn't affect us. Hurricane Harvey mm-hmm, did. Mm-hmm. So in May of 2019 was when our the, when we got flooded um, for the first time, um, and so we 
after that night, um, we went straight to work really probably that night and started contacting local area right. churches and empty buildings to just see if we could lease their spot for three months. Um, it was pretty hard to find, but we had, we have a kind of an on-site kind of facilities guy that has helped us with our building right, right. maintenance and what, what, what not. He right. is a Engineer. church member mm-hmm. and kind of put us in contact with um, his church and they graciously let us have, they didn't have a school operating at that time, um, which most churches in this area are pretty popular. So we got to move right in, moved 150 to 200 kids in um, for the summer camp. Mm. So it's pretty amazing. It was, yeah. it was just an act. It, it was, was amazing. It was, yeah, it's, it's kind of perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we paid them for that period of time as opposed, you know, and, and our, we had amazing bankers, absolutely the, the best bankers oh, in the amazing world. Amazing bankers, yeah. Which we always brag about them because it's a very small bank. And I mean, they literally, will answer an email at 1030 at night. I mean, it's that kind of a banker. So we, we've had lots of emails to them that time of night. Uh, but he, he forgo the, the, our, our mortgage payment, you know, during the flood as well, which he didn't have to do that. So it was a, it was a lot of people were taking care of us. We had a lot of angels on our shoulders at that time, for sure. All right. So you guys, I mean, what you did just now is you made that sound so easy because you literally just galvanized into action about, finding a church space. Let's make this happen. Let's make this work. Um, and I think, you know, and at that time, I remember this happening to you because I remember you coming into the Academy Facebook group, the private group that we have. And I think sharing what happened. And I think Coach Donna, because this happened to her, came, a lot of people were probably also helping you and supporting you and like giving you ideas. And so you at least had a group and a community upon which to, right. you know, right. stand on our shoulders so that you could be right. supported. So I'm happy that we. Mike Garatoni reached out because he had something similar. Um, yeah, there were a couple people, obviously my coach, the coach, Jen Connor kind of reached out too. So yeah. yeah. And then just the Facebook group has been, been huge. so valuable. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So that made me happy that we were able to support you during that whole time. And then, um, so you got that going on and you fixed your floors and you fixed your building and all the water damage and you had good bankers and probably pretty good insurance and all that thing, all that got happened. So how long did it take you from the, when that happened till mo- moving back in and getting back to business as usual? We moved back in the day before school started, um, which was around August 15th or so. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so right before school, that Sunday, we literally finished moving boxes in. Um, so like six months, three months. Ish. So oh, three months. Okay. May, well, maybe four months from May to August. Got it. Okay, cool. August. Yeah. And do you have any lessons? Because then you experienced another, we'll get into that thing next. So, but I wanted to ask you about insurance. Looking back on both ex- issues that you've had, did you have any lessons or, with, that you could share with regard to insurance coverage? Oh, totally. <laughs> have your there's, flood insurance in place. I mean, there's no doubt there. I mean, we hadn't had flood insurance. We, we would be... <laughs> We'd be out up a creek without a yeah. paddle. And and we all the good thing is, and one of the biggest things that I think anybody has to realize is your relationships you develop along the way of a business are so critical. They are so critical because our our flood man, his his son went to our school. You know, our 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 banker. Uh, his wife was her coach, volleyball coach in high school. But just the the relationships you form, you don't you take it for granted. You don't realize. My God, that's why this bridge has happened because I developed, I, de- I built this bridge a long time ago and it's now coming to fr- fruition. And it's just huge. Even customers now that, have, that were with us when I started, that came to help us with the flood. And they, they, had, they, they were grandparents, mm-hmm. but they knew because we had touched their lives back then. It, you know, you just, I don't think people ever really take stock in how important your relationship you build are. You just don't burn those bridges. And so that was huge. I mean, our flood, he was with me. Our flood man is another friend. And so he spent spent countless hours with me working with that. And I had, I'm, I'm a, I'm not as good on the computer as she is. So I had a lot, a lot of handwritten notes on, you know, coverage and things. And so, you know, it was just, there's a lot to, to, when you get to have a flood, there's a lot to it as far as getting the money you're supposed to get back. So we, we managed to get most of what we were, you know, our deductibles, we, we managed to get most everything back, but it was, you know, it was a half a million dollar loss. Right. So we, that we claimed that and then the contents on top of that. So it, it was pretty, pretty, 
pretty big deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she has, she's worked real hard on developing the community aspect. Um, like she does, you know, the Chamber of Commerce and everything that right. she can possibly right. do. And I'm like, why are you doing all that? Like, we don't need to do that. But now I'm like, oh. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of a big. It's kind of a, it's big, a big thing. Deal. That's a yeah. lot of resources. So yeah. we're we've really jumped on that as much as we can to right. kind of expand our community resources as right. much. Right, right, right. But that that's really was important. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I am a huge believer, having been a Rotary member myself mm-hmm. and a Chamber of the Commerce member. I am a huge believer in getting your relationships and your name out there through relationships of professional groups like that because. Those are the people that when you really are against the wall and they're going to go to bat for you locally, you know, and um, they'll also help you stay fully enrolled because they'll have that word of mouth component of in those groups is fantastic. It's invaluable. It really is. Right. Love that. Somehow we got That's important. (laughs) Yeah. So you came back and then you were able to get your enrollment back pretty quick because you had kept that what we call a loyalty fence strong and you kept those families and they came back with you. And then and then what happened? So this is August. So then what's the next thing that happened? So everything's going well. Our enrollment is almost pretty much back to normal, if not higher than it has been. Um, And about 30. Five, 39 days 39 into days, yeah. being back into the building, um, Hurricane Imelda hits us. Um, this time it's in the middle of the night. Um, and we just kind of knew, I mean, you could just judge these streets around here are just flooding worse and worse with every single rain that we get, uh, just kind of getting worse. Uh, and so my husband and I had to use our pedal bikes to get up there because the streets were so flooded that following morning. And uh, I just knew, you know, that's where we took some of the video of the river right next to our property. And I'm like, you know what? It still might not be that bad. (laughs) And we pull open to the front and you can just see water just rushing out of the front doors. I'm like, oh my God. And it's just like, okay, like, here we go. (laughs) Like, we know what to do. So let's get on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And this time around. So, I mean, you know. We had our litigation company and that's a little another issue because, you know, we got robbed by the litigation company at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, but our community with our um, relationship with the schools proved so oh, invaluable this time much. around right. because she um, she has uh, some of their kids, like some of the principal kids when they were really young would come to kids in action for kinder music or gymnastics. And so we still have those relationships. Well, one of the relationships in um, one of the ISDs, mm-hmm. the main ISD that we have, because we have about 100 after schoolers, so it's quite a big number that we have to accommodate. And most pay- places can't accommodate that number of kids. The um, Umble, um, the Umble ISD um, that we're in opened up their two of their elementary schools for our after schoolers. Huge. Even though they had a YMCA program yes. using that as well. So it was a big conflict of interest, but because of kind of the relationships that we had, which was huge. So we were able to accommodate a hundred after schoolers and two elementary schools this time around. They basically said, you take care of our children. We'll take care of you. Yeah. They didn't have to do that. And they didn't charge us a cent, you know, which is just, that's huge because when you're for profit to get into the schools that are always for nonprofit, that was huge. (laughs) So that was huge. And then we went back to our church and Mm -hmm. they opened their doors again, once again to us. So, right. We went, back, we went back to them for all of our child care through preschool. Right, right. And went back to work. <laughs> and we really only lost one family when we were at the church because the church was about what? Well, the second time we lost quite a few families. Yeah. Um, just, you know, they, I don't blame them. I mean, they I had, had enough. Yeah. A lot of them, it was a big commute because where we are is kind of in the middle of Kingwood where the church is at the very back of Kingwood. So it's a good couple miles. I mean, mm-hmm. it's not huge, but they were, you know. They were just going to find something right, else. Yeah. Right, right, right. So we did lose a bit of this time around. And not to mention the fear of a building being flooded with right. the children there. You know, I mean, that's that's a challenge for parents. But, you know, two ways you could look at it. You know, we're going to take care of them. And we're going to fix the building. And we're going to we, we, we flood proofed the second time, which is very costly. <laughs> but, you know, they did a lot of things to flood proof the building because we felt like we had to reassure our parents that we're going to take care of your kiddos and we're going to take care of our staff and our people. And we're going to, we're going to do this. We, there's no guarantees on a flood proofing the building. It's unfortunate. It's kind of a, just a crapshoot. You know, you just you may or may not work, 
So we still don't know if that worked. We, we don't. don't yeah. we, we don't really want to find out anytime soon. But we we did. We took the gamble, and and she wanted to see me at the whole building and get all the wood out. But <laughs> that was another whole. <laughs> no, think it's not going to. She still wants to see me at the building. <laughs> but you know, took all the any carpets, anything out, everything that can be waterproofed. We've had water. We have all cement floors basically now. And so we're just, we're ready. Bring it on. You know, we're ready. Yeah. Bring it on. Let's, let's not. <laughs> there, let me ask you this. Was there ever a moment when you looked at each other and you were just like, maybe we should just throw in the towel? No, if, we, if, we never said that. I don't no? really okay. think we did. I mean, it's like, there's no option. So much of the community was going through this with us. Yeah. Like one um, subdivision in particular, this was their second time as well. And their houses, like a lot of our family's houses flooded for a second time. Yeah. So it really, did not cross our mind. I mean, yeah, we felt sorry for ourselves and we had our woe is me moments. Um, we, drank, sure. we drank a lot. We drank a little bit. And um, <laughs> we have such a close admin team after, you know, yeah. especially going through all this together. We couldn't have done it with all, without all of them as well. And the interesting thing is that same banker that I was telling you about, he's, he's like a president of, of, a, local cha- of a local chamber. And he, he uses our story as an example to all of his, all of his people. In his circle, so that's it's pretty. Yeah, we there, if there's no option, you just do it. You just do it. Now, third time, we might I might be in Mexico. Yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> like really, God, seriously, yeah. this again? We're flood-proof. No, we're floodproof now. I mean, but, but now there's the pandemic, so it's like, <laughs> yeah, no. it's nothing. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, we've had about two normal months in the past two years. We just realized, so we're ready for a few normal months. Yeah, I, I bet you are. I think the hardest thing was walking in and seeing the gym floor because we have a beautiful hardwood floor in our gym. And when it all popped up, you know, it was just like, that was pretty gut wrenching. And we have a gymnastic carpet for the gymnastics on the other side. And that was just floating. So. (laughs) Well, and you could tell we have, you know, our culture has just really improved as well. And so when we went, we went, went, we went in the second time and walked in just even all of our teachers were just crying. They were just also upset, you know, so they have such investment with us as well because they physically helped move all of our boxes back in and they moved everything to the church. And I know it's a lot of work. They're throwing out all the moldy stuff. So they, they, they have a vested interest as well. So yeah, yeah, it was, it was a tough time. Yeah. 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 We have a, yeah, we have a back shed in our back acre parking lot and, and the, the whole shed flooded. And so we used to store a lot of our, our PE equipment and fun things that we do for holidays. And so when they came to clean the flood debris, it just, they just literally drug everything out in a great big pile, like a big pile of dirt. So that, (laughs) that was gut wrenching, but but it's, it's all replaceable stuff. So it's, you know, yep. So so let me ask you this with regard to, and you mentioned that your culture has improved a ton. So we'll talk about that, but I want to ask you about enrollment. So what one marketing kind of go-to thing can you share that has really helped you retain and, and, you know, grow enrollment through all of these peaks and valleys in your career? I don't know if I can say one, like we busted our butts with, um, between like social media and improving our website and doing videos of our teachers during the flood time, we really made a lot of videos and, um, we're really trying to communicate with our parents constantly. I mean, it was like almost a daily thing that we were Mm -hmm. sending out something or we were just communicating, look what the gym looks like now. And just, you know, it was constantly progressing with our parents. Right. But I mean, I don't think I could narrow it down to any one thing. I mean, um, we improved our tours. I mean, everything really, honestly, everything from enrollment boot camp. we just kind of kept going back to it every single time. Um, After every flood, we're like, okay, let's start over. How can we make our tours work in a different building Right. You know, they're still going to come to, they're going to come to the church and tour because they get to see our teachers and meet us, but they're not going to actually see where their kid is going to go in a couple months. So we, we, we adapted everything into a, you know, different scenario Um, and updating our website to reflect where we are now and where we're going to be. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So that's really the, I guess the magic is just going back to the tried and true roadmap that I teach and we teach over and over again in the boot camp is simply tracking understanding your numbers, driving leads, right. working on the assets to get leads in, do your tour, do a great phone call, great tour, follow mm-hmm. up, wash, rinse, repeat. And if you just continue on that mm-hmm. five-step 
process, it really works. Um, you might try different things and we're always helping people try to add things in to increase their effectiveness and or shift with changing technology. So, um, right. but yeah, that, that you guys hit, hit the nail on the head. Well, Let's talk the phone about script, the phone script, especially we really, obviously we had to edit that because that's our first point of contact is to really convince them, Hey, everything's fine. You know, so our phone script that really had to be pretty powerful. Um, and, and I mean, we're constantly editing it. We actually met today and edited it once again, our phone script again, and ran through, you know, did little different scenarios. So it's a constant work in progress. We don't just keep the same phone script. We're constantly looking at it and reevaluating right, it. Right. Cool. Well, that's, that's a best practice right there. So that's great, ladies. Um, what about culture? You mentioned that your culture has gotten better and better and stronger and stronger. How did you keep those poor teachers um, positive during these times of turmoil? Honestly, a lot of the ideas we got from um, the Facebook page, right. like any, anytime they were doing any sort of, um, whether it's a parent appreciation or a staff appreciation, because we wanted to keep our parents happy too. Um, so we were constantly getting ideas probably from the Facebook page was, I, I would say our number one idea, right. Or right. our number one resource, our number mm -hmm. one ghost. Right. And then the, the drive through um, restaurant, we, we had it all that we had like, and again, relationships, again, we had like eight, eight restaurants that were willing to basically give us the food. Mm -hmm. they, they gave us meals and parents bought the food. And that was, that helped us toward our, you know, flood fund, you know, to help us replenish a lot of things. Right. That flood did, didn't do so. That was a really, that was a, really That's a cool idea. I love that yeah. idea. Yes, and, and, and I'm well, our to... biggest goal was to continue to pay the teachers, even yeah, if, you know, because we, to... we were closed for a little bit while we transition everything from building to building. Right. So we needed. So we always right. wanted to make sure our teachers were first, so we were taking care of them. Um, whether it's the parents donated some of their, you know, tuition to what toward their pay, or because mm -hmm. again, it was a hard time because a lot of them flooded. It's like, how do you ask a parent that flooded twice for them to pay tuition? You know. Um, yeah. So it was a very sensitive time. We had to really take every family into consideration and with, with tuition, but we wanted to pay our teachers. And then our, our parking lot flooded too. So all of our staff, when we made them stay to watch the children till 1030, all their cars were flooded. So, you know, it was tough. Yeah. That was tough because that, you know. Yeah. But, but we got through it. We got through it. And, yeah. Well, and I think that sometimes, you know, enduring – adversity together makes a team stronger, right? right. Of course. Yeah. And so the people that stayed with you, which hopefully most of your team stayed with you, or at least the ones that you wanted to stay with you. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, they, they all really stayed. Yeah. All stayed. Um, awesome. And that was one of our core values is fun. And so we really tried to incorporate, you know, like with the line dancing before a staff meeting and, you yeah. know, just different things that we try to do as a team. Right. Right. So, you know, throw a little fun. In there. <clears throat> some mixers, some fun little mixers that yeah. we would do at meetings and things. Yeah. Just to, Cause it was, it was a trying time for everybody, not just us, you know, it was a whole community. Yeah, yeah, some was, of the teachers flooded as well. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So it was tough. Yep. We're good. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> well, lots of idea sharing going on. They're referring to the Academy private Facebook group. And um, that makes me happy that you, cause I, I am watching those ideas being shared all over the place and a lot of really, really cool ideas. Um, Tell us a little bit about how it felt to win Child Care Rockstar. I want to hear this story. When did you decide to enter the contest? And did you have any resistance to entering it? And then, you know, how you put your submission together. You were the first ones to submit. Oh, so wow. I knew that you were serious and you were all in because I received your, and your submission blew me away. When I watched it for the very first time, I had tears Donna Jensen said she was ugly crying. Um, and then she wanted to show her husband, Jeff. And so then she said, I ugly cried at my, all over myself <laughs> again, twice. And um, so it was a very emotional video and submission and just a wonderful story of overcoming. So tell us more about that whole thing in your head. What were you thinking? Were you thinking, you know, were you going to do it this summer? And then you thought, nah, or was it last minute? Like, tell us more. So probably, so I joined the summit, like I, I joined in the summit um, in October, 2018. Um, you mean the academy? So in the academy, yeah. right. And then um, in May of 2019 was our first flood followed by August. So the whole year, like I only got really a few months to really devote 
all of my time to what I really wanted. Like we want to expand and we, you know, mm-hmm. we want to do all these great things, but we were so focused on sledding. I'm like, I'm not getting my money out of the academy. <laughs> right. But I mean, we really were, it was just, you know, it's not what I wanted to focus yes. on. And so, um, so when we flooded the second time, I'm like, okay, that's it. Like we, I'm just, we're going to be rock stars is what we're going to do. Yeah. Like I'm going to do this. It was way out of my comfort zone, wow. but I think, I honestly think I decided that I wanted to do it after the second flood. Oh yeah. Right. So it was, it was a long time in the making. So, yeah. um, but yeah, way out of my comfort zone. I almost backed out a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, it was something that I committed to because, you know, just watching our team and we did, we implemented so many of these different things that you um, that you've come up with and all the coaches have come up with. Well, I think so, it was a necessary story, too, to tell people that, you know, well, you, especially you can with get the pandemic right now. You can, like get, you can overcome. Yeah, you can get stuff like this. Hit yeah. side and not once, but twice, but three times and still swim. You know, yes. you just, failure is not an option. You just keep going. I mean, I. We never once thought that we wouldn't keep going. I mean, right. I've been a competitive, it's, I've come from a competitive family. I'm a very competitive person. So once I put my mind to something and failures is just doesn't really cross neither one of us. It doesn't mm-hmm. really cross our minds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, I love that spirit. I love Diane, your comment, which is you, we would never have even crossed our mind to not keep going. So I yeah. love that. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so I could tell with intentionality that you entered because it was like, boom. And, um, and so then you won and competed against two other extremely great stories, worthy, right. worthy opponents, really an amazing um, contest this year at the summit. And so we are sending you a check for five grand and we're going to fly you out to Aspen and you can spend a day with me here in Carbondale and we'll go and have some cocktails and some dinner and celebrate this amazing accomplishment. So with that, what are you going to do with the cash? Any thoughts? Are you going to go on a big trip or what are you going to do? I don't know. I don't I, we know. really don't. We, really um, have. we definitely want to give some of it back to our team. Cause I mean, this is, I mean, they're, they're such a big part of this whole entire story, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. From moving, constantly moving and doing U-Hauls and, you know, I leaching the mold and whatever it might be. And so much of our like, stuff was in storage. We had stuff in six different storages. All of our stuff was in storage too. So right. all of our furniture that we wanted to save while they were doing the building was in storage. So just, I mean, moving, everybody know what a pain in the butt moving is, but to move a 15,000 square foot building of all of its entities, it was, it was tough. We asked a lot of them. We did. But taking a trip has crossed our mind. Yes, yes <laughs> it, it has. <laughs> Let's be honest. It's crossed it. Yeah. It's been, yeah. I think you deserve it. I think you can share some with your team and also do some kind of a fabulous yeah, trip yeah. because, yeah. you know, you've, you've carried the weight of all of this burden, this, this responsibility, and it's a joy for you as well as just a lot on your shoulders. So mm-hmm. you deserve to, you know, reward yourself for that, um, for that journey. So uh, what is some, one thing that y- you would maybe have chosen to do differently in your business <laughs> or your life if you had the chance to do it all over again? So I, so I, you know, I went to college um, I have my master's in counseling, which is, I mean, it actually does come in helpful. I have never taken a business class. I have not, don't have one <laughs> business class. So if I can go back, I would definitely take some more business classes. Yeah. Um, I know you were talking about negotiation, with yeah. a huge acquisition accounting yeah. um, accounting one on one so we know what p and l meant you know right <laughs> what is p and l yeah right. so, so just <laughs> yeah cool. right. I would, like through the academy we i mean we just know so much more about business than we did when we started oh yeah yeah um, like you know we actually have a budget now and um well, the, the first the first meeting we came to, I think we we all the acronyms you were throwing out. We said, oh "What's that acronym? What does that mean?" So, <laughs> what's what's the ROI? What's yeah. CRM? <laughs> yeah, P and L, ROI, FTE. Yeah, uh, so still we're still working on EBITDA. I'm still working on that. EBITDA, one. lifetime customer value, LCV. Yeah, there's a lot of them. We try oh. I try to explain them. Cause I don't oh, want the newbies to feel lost. No, yeah. you do. You do. Just when it's all hit at, you at one time, it's like, wham. I know. <laughs> yeah. Cause I was a B, my BS was in education and you know, I was a PE teacher. So I, I would have loved to have had some kind of, I had never planned on a business ever. So, but it's, you learn, you learn. Yeah. You learn. You learn. 
That's good. <laughs> well, the acronym that I con- that comes to my mind watching you two is BFF. You guys are just, the- <laughs> you really, really are. You're just really, really cute. And I love just the journey you've been on and the Im- lives you've impacted together. And um, it's just very meaningful for me to, to work with you guys. Um, let's finish out with, um, with sharing any, any resources. So with regard to books, podcasts, or, um, anything else that you're either foundationally has been formative in your life, in your business, like this is like my favorite, whatever, or something you're really into right now that you want to share either one. So the Ron Clark, move your bus. That was huge. Our whole entire admin team read that after we saw him, what yeah. was it? A- was it a mastermind or was it the summit? I don't know. Well, remember. he was at both. So he did a, he did a, a mastermind one, meeting for us, but, did. but yeah, summit, he was live with us. Um, yes, that one, the live one. Yeah. Um, and so, and we even renamed, reframed our like employee of the month is now runner of the month. Like we really got into it. Um, nice. So yeah, we all did that. Um, I love girl stop apologizing by Rachel Hollis. Um, and I'm Me currently too. doing start with why I'm listening to that with Simon Sinek. Okay, with Simon. Yep. Cool. Um, and then you, you love the child care millionaire. I like it. Yeah. I still have to get through that one. I like I'm the nugget book. I, I like to read just bullets. Just <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I, one of the things that I, that I have in my career has been, um, I don't, you're not going to be familiar with her. I'm sure where well, you might be. Her name is Patty Kamara and she's a gymnastic marketing guru. You and her mm. would be FFs. Cause I mean, she is, She's one of these that is, again, it's not, you know, you need to treat this as a business. I know we all love teaching gymnastics, but at the end of the day, you've got to be able to pay all your people and your bills. And I mean, things like whenever you put a new fluorescent bulb in, you need to tell all the parents that this is where their money's going. Put a big sign. I mean, she was huge. You'd heard her. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She, she used to always target the marketing end of it too. And she has like a hundred different videos on how to teach a cartwheel, how to do this. And I say videos, they're probably virtual now, but well, yeah, yeah, VHS probably. VHS, yeah. yes, whatever. So yeah. So cool. she, she's a, a fun person and uh, that's, that's one of my inspirations for, for marketing, but that was, you know, and we both pretty much walk, I think, to your podcast. Yeah, We love the podcast. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're just the right amount of time. They are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're quick, you know, if you've got a little windshield time, 35, 45 minutes, boom, boom, boom. Um, so thanks for that shout out. I've been having a blast doing them. So it's very meaningful to me to know that you're fans wow. of the show and now you're on the show. So how cool is yeah, that? No, it's so crazy. Yes, it is crazy. It well, is. and I want to like coach, um, coach Brian, I was actually listening to his today, but that reminded me like when you talk about mindset, he was probably one of the first ones to really change our mindset. Oh yeah. yeah. At one of the first meetings, I, we asked him, I think it was like at a happy hour or something. And we're like, so how do you avoid paying so much money in taxes every single year? He's like, oh, my goal is to pay a million dollars in taxes. And I'm like, oh, he's like, that means I'm doing really well. I'm like, okay, that just totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. beforehand we were just yeah. like here's money here's money let's yeah. you know that's before um, floods we did it was before <laughs> floods now we don't have all this money yeah, yeah that was in- but you have so many eggs in, in that y- you have created in this big basket and to yeah. say one of those eggs is better than another it's it's all of the cumulative of all of them mm-hmm. because there's so much information in each one of these little eggs that you know take a lifetime to listen and, and get all of it in my lifetime anyway <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. And I love all the wisdom that each coach brings and each podcast okay. guest. And I will tell you so many nuggets, so much goodness in our tribe. And uh, the podcast is just chock full and I love it so much. But the uh, episode right before yours is featuring Jim Do, And that is all about one thing that I just did to, t- to pay no tax so regard to how do you get get around, how can you still make millions and pay no tax is something called an ESOP, which is an employee stock ownership plan. And there's about 11,000 companies in the United States who are ESOP companies. And it's a complex process with a lot of attorneys that turns your company from a regular company, S Corp or what have you, to an ESOP. And you could still retain your S Corp status, but you basically sell your company to your employees wow. and they get stock in the company. You still retain 100% ownership, but you now no longer pay a one red penny to Uncle wow. Sam. 
So, and it's a fully legal, the Congress, I think it was in the eighties, the Congress created a law to allow people to sell their company to their employees, to have employees be able to be more, um, bought in and get wealthy along with the company, with the business owner. Right. So it's a great strategy for sharing your company with your employees. Uh, but that's how you pay no tax ladies, just to answer your question. So there you go. There's my nugget for the day. There you go. Yeah. That's good to know. <laughs> another acronym. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. Another acronym. See, Esau, there you go. Way to go. <laughs> Write it down, everybody. All right. So, um, Diane Havens and Heather Jensen, child care rock star winners, 2020 mother daughter team extraordinaire. I love you. And I've just loved having you. We've had a lot of fun on this podcast. Um, thank you so much for being here and sharing your story. We enjoyed it. Oh, thank you course. for your time. Take thank a vacation. You. Take a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I'm going to take a vacation, but I'm going to also continue this work that I do because it doesn't really feel like work a lot of days. So right. as long as I can keep that, keep that up, yeah. Um, it's good. It's really, really good. <laughs> um, I'm going to go pour a glass of wine and I hope that you guys have a great evening. Um, enjoy. And I just hope that water of any kind can stay away from your school. We hope so, so too. A little prayer. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless everybody. Thanks for tuning in and we will see you next time. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.